Hello ladies and gentlemen, scared to avoid here bringing you another Minecraft World War II vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial, we go ahead and build the M40 gun motor carriage. The 155mm gun motor carriage M40 was an American self-propelled artillery vehicle based on a widened and lengthened medium tank M4A3 chassis, but with continental engine and with the HVSS, the horizontal vault spring suspension, which was introduced at the end of the Second World War. Equipped with a 155mm M2 gun, it was designed to replace the earlier M12 gun motor carriage. Its prototype designation was the T38, but this was changed to the M40 in March 1945. A single pilot vehicle was used in the Eastern or the European Theater in 1945 by the 991st Field Artillery Battalion, along with a related 8-inch howitzer gun motor carriage T89, later redesignated the M43 howitzer gun motor carriage which was sometimes equipped with a 105mm barrel. A total of 311 out of a planned 600 were completed by the Pressed Steel Car Company before the end of wo the war, 24 of which were later converted into M43s. From there, it was deployed during the Korean War. After World War II, the M40 was used by the British Army, who designated the M55mm SP M40 and called it the Cardinal. In the tradition of using uh, elastical names for uh, self-propelled artillery, such as Decon, Priest, Bishop, and Sexton. So, uh, overall, pretty uh, cool uh, vehicle here, a artillery piece um, nonetheless, and we don't have many World War II self-propelled artillery guns, and I think this here is a nice addition, especially in our American section. Seems like Germany kind of dominates that for the most part, uh, but a pretty cool looking vehicle, again, built on that Sherman chassis, and um, just overall is a really cool looking uh, build, and should be a fun one to uh, add to your World War II maps if you're looking for some sort of self-propelled artillery type gun. Um, but yeah, should be a fun build and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it. So starting off with, we have the chassis here of the vehicle. Uh, pretty straightforward design here, nothing really too complex or anything like that. Uh, the front, all the little details and stuff like that has the uh, crew, uh, or basically the pilot or the driver and the um, co-driver as long as the as well as the engine located about in the midsection here of the vehicle further back we have the main mount for the gun so again it's a 155 millimeter gun um, basically mounted in the back here in this open carriage type configuration when in a uh, deployed settings such as uh, fire so we're basically going to fire it would deploy a ramp here in the back here which gave the um, crew and working on the gun a little bit more wiggle room and a little bit more space to uh, basically perform their duties so yeah, I gave them a little bit more room around uh, the back there to give perform their duties and all that stuff. And uh, really, that's overall the uh, the vehicle. A pretty cool little self-propelled artillery gun, and our kind of first dive really into um, the Allied uh, self-propelled artillery of the war. Anyways, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer, layer number one. All right, guys. So moving into our first layer, we're going ahead and starting off with layers zero and one. For these layers to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and place down a narrow brick side like this, followed by a narrow brick top side coming off of it. We then want to place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight narrow brick blocks in the ground, and then two narrow brick slabs like so, narrow brick slab and top slab. At this point, we want to go ahead and then place down a row of blocks that's going to go over the tops here of this section right here and then driving down below this section we're going to place down grindstones coming off the bottom of these blocks so grindstone dark oak top slab grindstone 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 dark oak top slab and a grindstone like that now if you are on a different version you're not able to do this because once you do this and delete these blocks the grindstones will disappear from my knowledge so if that's the case just go ahead and very simply go on uh, place the grindstones on top of the blocks like that so it's kind of an alternative you can go ahead and use there in that situation. We're going to then place down item frames on the sides here of these grindstones. And then in those item frames, we're going to place down some green terracotta blocks. After that is all complete, we want to go ahead and then grab our dark oak with top slabs coming off this narrow brick slab uh, here in the front. Or actually, sorry, rather this uh, this first grindstone, we're going to place down a row of two dark oak with top slabs across. And then going to the back here, we're going to place down a row of two coming off that narrow brick slab there as well. After that, we just want to go ahead and then fill in the space in between those rows of three of dark oak top slabs with more dark oak top slabs. We go ahead and fill in the base here of the vehicle. After that, we're going to basically do the same thing we did for the tracks, just over here to the air side. 
So I'm going to go and do this a little bit quicker since I've already explained the other side in detail. You can either follow along if you're quick enough or go ahead and build the other side. Um, pause the video, do whatever you guys need to do. Uh, but basically both sides are completely symmetrical here when it comes to the tracks. So uh, just like this, we will go and place down our grindstones and our wheels here. After that we'll delete the blocks on top of these as we won't be needing those. And we'll go ahead and make sure we pull any ground we break. And then obviously our item frames here on the side of those grindstones like so. And green terracotta blocks in those uh, item frames like that. After that, for the front section here, we want to go ahead and place down a dark oak top set to both sides there. In the middle space, we want to go ahead and place down a dark oak trap door like this, and then come off the dark oak trap door and place down a dark oak fence gate and open it up toward that slab like that. Once we have that done on the back here, we want to go ahead and grab our dark oak fence gates. We're going to place down one and two back, one and two like this, and we're going to go ahead and place down dark oak signs on the sides of these fence gates here, like that to both sides. So like that. Then after that, we're going to place down a dark oak grid stair, coming off those two fence gates, followed by a fence gate in between the stairs, and a sign coming off the fence gate like that. And after that, we want to go and then skip a space of one back from these stairs. We're going to place down an end rod to both sides like so, and then an end rod across in between them, just like that for the back there. And once we have that all complete, that right there is going to do it for our base layer, layer number one here. So take a look at it from above. This is what we should get for layer zero one complete. With that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, layer number two. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two, to go ahead and get started with here, we want to go and place down a uh, nether brick stair on top of these two top slabs like so. And we're going to then place down a mossy cobblestone wall on the insides here of those stairs and then a white stained glass pane in between those walls like that. After that, we're going to then place down a row of three of green terracotta across. We're going to go ahead and follow this up with a green shulker box, which we'll grab from our creative menu and get from right here. We'll place down a green shulker box like this to both sides. An item frame coming off that shulker box like so. And then a cobweb in that item frame like that to both sides as well as a dark oak wood button on the side of that shulker box like that. We then want to take our green terracotta and place down a row of three across, followed by a second row of three, a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and nine rows of three going back of green terracotta. On this last row back here, we're going to place down a green terracotta block, or sorry, a green shortcut box again to both sides. Item frames, cobweb, and a dark oak wood button if you're on Java. Now, a dark oak wood button and item frame trick is only going to be available for those of you on PC, or I should say Java edition. If you're on Bedrock or Pocket, or Pocket edition, you will not be able to place down a button and item frame in the same block space. Uh, so, basically, if that's the case, just go ahead and place down the item frame. If you're on Java, we can do that extra feature with the button like that. After that's done though, uh, go ahead and continue now. We're going to place down a nether brick top set like this to both sides. We're going to go then place down a anvil. After that, and then we want to go then place down a dark oak sign. Come off the sides here of this anvil. So just like that to both sides. After that, we want to go then place down a nether brick top slab again to both sides. This time we'll follow this up with an item frame and a green terracotta block in the item frame, same thing over here on this side, and a dark oak wood sign over the side there of the item frame if you're on Java. Continuing on, we're going to place down two dark oak wood upside down stairs, back to back, same thing over here, two dark oak wood upside down stairs, and again we'll place down dark oak wood signs on the sides of those stairs, like so. After that, another narrow brick top slab right here, a item frame, green terracotta block, dark oak wood sign on the side of that item frame. Uh, if if available, and same thing will be over here. So just like that. And after that, we're going to then place down an anvil, again to both sides, like so. And then a dark oak sign coming off the sides of these anvils. And then after that, a narrow brick top slab to both sides here. An item frame, green terracotta block, and again a dark oak sign on the side there, if applicable. After that, on the back here, we want to go and very simply place down a narrow brick stair on top of those two top slabs. A dark oak wood sign coming off the stairs here. And then after that, in the space in the middle, uh, we're actually going to go ahead and swap out this last row of three of green terracotta with a row of three of green shulker boxes instead. And then after that, we're going to take our daylight detectors, just place down a row of three across. Make sure you close those trap doors if they do open. And a narrow row of three across right here. Same thing, again, make sure those trap doors do remain closed after that. And then a row three across here, and close that trap door. 
And then taking our Dark Goku Trapdoors, we're gonna place down in row three, and close them like so, and in a second row three, like that, directly after those. With that all done, that right there is gonna conclude our uh, ramp back ramp, and with that, that is gonna complete layer number two of the build. Moving into our next layer, we'll be moving into layer three. For layer three to get started with here, we're gonna place down row five of Dark Goku stairs across this section here. Followed by an item frame, thrown off those two stairs to the sides, and then snowballs in those item frames just like that. After that's done, we want to go ahead and place down a green carpet on top of these uh, dark or these narrow brick stairs, like that to both sides. And then after that, we're going to then place down a dark oak fence post on top of these two mossy cobblestone walls. Now, place down those fence posts if you do want to have this little um, support here for the barrel. Um, if you do not want to include that support there, then obviously you can go ahead and uh, not include those dark oak fence posts. Those will that will work just fine. After that, though, we're going to take our green terracotta. We're going to place down a row of five across. On both ends, we're going to place down a dark oak wood button. We're going to place down a second row of five. Same thing. Dark oak wood button to both sides. Then a third row of five. And then a fourth row. And then at this point, we're going to then place down a white concrete block to both sides. Middle space here between those blocks, we're going to place down a row of three of green terracotta. At this point here, we're going to place down a green choker box in the center. A mossy cobblestone wall to the sides. Uh, this is going to be followed by a green terracotta block in the center, a green choker box again to both sides, and then we're going to place down a uh, green choker box here, and again a mossy cobblestone wall here in the corners, like that around that turret. We then want to place down a uh, green carpet on the left side here, and then going back from that we're going to place down two spruce wood slabs. Over on the right side, a little bit different, we're going to place down a stripped choker box in that section like so. And on top of that, we'll place down a spruce wood trapdoor like so, just so we don't forget to place that later. Then going back from it, we're going to place down a row of one and two green carpets, and then a row of three of dark oak buttons across this section here. After that is all done, we're going to place down a dark oak trapdoor here on top of the shulker box, open toward the back. Same thing over here. And then come off the side of this trapdoor, we're going to place down a dark oak trapdoor to both sides. We then want to place down one two and three trapdoors going forward close those trapdoors like that and over here is the same thing one two and close those trapdoors like that after we have that all done uh, we then want to go ahead and place down a dark oak wood slab which will be coming off these trapdoors like so as well as a iron bar coming off those trapdoors like that and then also an iron bar that's going to be on the side of these daylight detectors which I forgot to include from the previous layer so just like that on the back there for the supports there or uh, the cables that help pull up the back ramp here. Um, anyways though, that right there is going to conclude everything we have. Um, actually one last thing is we're also going to place down dark good signs on the sides of these slabs. With that though, that right there is going to conclude what we have for layer number two, and with that let's go ahead, or sorry, layer number three, and with that let's move into layer number four. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four to go ahead and get started with here, we want to go ahead and begin with by placing down our end rods on top of these Layer brick or these dark oak wood fence posts if you placed them in the previous layer. We're also going to place down an end rod that goes across in between them. We then want to place down a spruce wood slab like this to both sides. Then taking our zombie heads, we're going to place down zombie heads on these two stairs in front of the slabs. And then we're going to then place down zombie heads here to the sides, zombie head in the center, and then zombie heads like that back from the slab like so. We're going to place down a daylight detector here between those zombie heads, then one out to both sides. We're going to then go back on the right side to daylight detector, or sorry, actually, um, we're going to go back a total of three daylight detectors. We then want to place down a rail here, also a rail right here, and then we're going to then place down a stripped spruce wood block right here to the left side. Coming off that block, we're going to place down a trip bar hook, and also a spruce pressure plate on top of it, just so we don't forget. In this space right here, we're also going to place down a daylight detector. We're going to then place down item frames on these two green terracotta blocks, and then we're going to place down green terracotta blocks in the item frames like so. At this point, we're going to place down a green terracotta block here, dark oak wood slab to both sides, and then another green terracotta block like that to the sides. On the side of that green terracotta block, we're going to place down a dark oak wood trap door on both sides like so. We then want to go ahead and uh, take our green terracotta. We're going to place down one, two, and three green terracotta blocks down, or actually, sorry, my bad, two more down the center here, a dark oak wood slab, and then a dark oak wood trap door like this to both sides of the slab, opened up like so. We then want to go ahead and grab a zombie head and a dark oak wood fence gate. We're going to place down a zombie head on both sides of the green terracotta block here, and then a dark oak wood fence gate on top of this wall, opened up toward that dark oak wood slab. 
Once we have that all complete, we're going to go ahead and place down a dark liquid fence gate here coming off the side. Coming off that fence gate, we're going to place down an item frame, and then we want to go and then place down a cobweb in the item frame like so. On the other side, uh, we basically are only going to place down a zombie head. Or actually, we'll come back to that in a little bit. Uh, basically, at this point, we're just going to place down a dark oak trap door on the side. Then three more. And we'll go ahead and close those up like so. And same thing over here. Our four dark oak trap doors. And over here on the right side, we're just going to place down a zombie head here on the side of this um, trap door. And then we'll place down trap doors on top of these ones. Like so. And same thing over here. Just like that. And then after we have that done on the back of those uh, trap doors, we're going to place down an, or sorry, an iron bar to both sides. Once we have that all complete there, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer number uh, four. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number five. So for these layers here, we're actually going to go ahead and just move it into our file layers. We have layers five through seven. Um, six, layers six and seven are pretty simple, so let's go ahead and kind of group them up with this um, last section of layers. Uh, but anyways, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a green terracotta block on top of this one, followed by one and two more forward. We're going to place down a mossy cobblestone wall on the sides of this block here, and then a smooth stone top slab, like that going back from there. We then want to place down a dark oak weed sign on the sides of this green terracotta block, and then after that, we're going to go ahead and place down a mossy cobblestone wall going forward, and again, a dark oak weed sign on both sides. If you... Uh, Go from this wall, we're going to place down two mostly cobblestone walls, and at this point you can kind of pick and choose what you want to do. If you do have the uh, little brace around the barrel, we're going to place down a green terracotta block. If you want to have the brace off the tank, we're going to place down a mostly cobblestone wall. So again, kind of up to you guys, but we're going to have our green terracotta block like that to match this model here. We're also going to place down a zombie head here to both sides of that green terracotta block. And then going forward from this uh, block space here, we're going to place down three mossy cobblestone walls with that going forward. After that's all done, we're going to go and then grab ourselves some iron bars and also a oak wood, dark oak wood fence post. We're going to place down a fence post on top of the stair here from the previous layer and then just go up three iron bars like that for the radio antenna. Then for this back section here, we're going to place down an additional two green terracotta blocks down the center there, followed by an anvil to both sides like so. After we have that done, we're also going to place down an N-Rod on top of this, these two zombie heads. We then want to place down a dark oak trap door on top of this section here, as well as over here. And we're going to then place down a green banner, which will be coming off that trap door like so. Over here on the left side, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull like that for uh, the little optics there uh, for aiming or whatever. Then after we have that done, we're going to go and then place down a mossy coastal wall on top of this block here, followed by a dark oak wood stair, and then coming off the face of the stair, we're going to place down a dark oak wood sign, like so. After that, we're going to also place down a dark oak wood fence gate, which will be on this side of this wall, opened up toward it like so. Then on the other side of the build, we're going to place down a uh, dark oak wood fence gate here that's going to be opened up toward the outside. Coming off the fence gate, we're going to place down a grindstone, and then we want to go and then place down a dark oak wood sign on the side of this fence gate, like so. And once we have that all done right there, that is going to basically complete that. And going ahead and come building up to the top of the gun, we're going to place down a uh, dark oak wood slab uh, on top of this green terracotta block here, and then two dark oak wood trap doors forward. We're going to place down a dark oak wood slab on top of those two anvils, and then a dark oak wood upside down corner stair, or sorry, just upside down stair, uh, is going to go on top of those end rods like so. And then on top of those uh, two stairs, we're going to place down green carpet. Levers on the back, which will be flicked downwards like so. And then a dark oak wood trap door on top of that stair, like that. And with that all complete right there, that is going to basically wrap up uh, layers 5 through 7. And with that, my tutorial here for the M40 self-propelled artillery gun. Hope you guys do enjoy this uh, tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do not use this build, I you guys give me proper credit for it. This will be linked inside the build link to my channel or this video if this does appear in social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, your free user for projects you guys are working on over on Enjoy the Build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's been Gary204, and I'll see you guys next time.